Hi everyone, my name is Nuria and this is my swing journey and for today's video we're going to make scrunchies This is not yet another video about me teaching you how to make a scrunchie I think there's more than enough out there I decided to create a video using my engineering mind and my creativity mind to see what the differences are between different types of elastic, different types of fabric, different types of lengths, of widths, of everything that I could imagine and what different... everything, all the differences that I can find I put them in this video. We all know that there's always a celebration around the corner, whether it's Christmas or a birthday party or a wedding or a baby shower or just I want to have a party, let's have a party or I love you and I want to make a present for you. So this is a very quick and easy project and I think you can do it, all of it, in 30 minutes. There's a lot of people out there saying it can be done in 10 minutes. This is true if you have already your idea. But I'm slow in my idea because I'm a perfectionist and I want to decide exactly what do I want to get out from that scrunchie. And if you're like me, 30 minutes. If you're not like me and you're chaotic, then in five minutes you have it. Now, the first thing I tested are five different elastic types. I use a 0.3 millimeter elastic, then a 0.5 millimeter elastic, then one centimeter elastic, 1.5 centimeter, and two centimeter elastic. For this example, I used exactly the same amount of fabric. So it's a rectangle of seven centimeters by 45 centimeters. If we look at the scrunchies, we can already see that there are a lot of differences. The smallest elastic has the least bit of gathers, let's say, and the biggest elastic has the most. This is because when we have the smallest one, the elastic goes to just one side of the scrunchie and then that side is the one that has all the gathers, but the other side is completely free. So this allows the scrunchie to, I don't know, have more fabric. And then if we look, for example, at the completely opposite example, the two centimeter one, we see that the elastic is almost as big as our fabric and then that fabric gets gathered on both sides. So then that one allows for less fabric, let's say, because there's already a lot there. And how do we decide which elastic is the best one for our project? Well, you'll have to think, first of all, of what's your idea? Is your idea usability or is your idea aesthetic? Because if it's aesthetic, I would like more of a bigger elastic because then it gives the feeling that it's kind of a bracelet and the other ones are more a scrunchie that belongs on your hair instead of, I don't know, your hand. Of course you can create exactly the same feeling with the bigger elastic, you just need a bigger rectangle of fabric. If on the other hand what you're looking for is usability, then what you need to define is is your hair thick or thin? And do you want your hair to have a mark or not have a mark? If you have a stronger elastic, then that's going to be more for thick hair, but that's also going to leave a mark. But if on the other hand you get an elastic like that it's lighter, like this one, then it's going to be nicer on your hair, but let's say you have thick hair, this is not gonna hold anything. But then if you have thick one, I would either get one of these circular elastics that are very strong, or I would get a bigger one, like one centimeter. I would not go for 1.5 and two centimeters because for your hair, it looks a little bit weird when you put it on. Now let's talk about width. I have here three different scrunchies with different widths. The first one has seven centimeters, the second one 12 centimeters, and the third one has 22 centimeters. And the three scrunchies have exactly the same length, that is 45 centimeters. I think the differences are pretty obvious and there's not much I can say, it's just that your scrunchie is going to be bigger or smaller. This is again if you want aesthetic or usability. If you want usability, then I will go for the smallest one, but if you want to have a very nice ponytail or a very nice and fluffy hairstyle, then I would go for the biggest one. The next thing we're going to talk about is the length of the fabric. Here I have three different examples. The first one, I got the length of the elastic and I multiplied it by 2.5. The second one I multiplied by four and the third one I multiplied by six. The difference here is the amount of ruffles you're going to have. The three rectangles are the same width, that is seven centimeters, and they are all using exactly the same elastic. Because if you remember at the beginning, the way that the gathers distribute in the scrunchie is different depending on it. I think it's also pretty obvious that the smallest rectangle has the least amount of gathers and the biggest one has the most amount of gathers. So the bigger the rectangle, the more gathers. That's basically it. But this is not it. There's one last thing that is very important and this is the ratio of fabric. 
Here we have two different examples. The top one has seven centimeters on this one and 22 centimeters on that one, and both are 45 centimeters long. And on the bottom one, we also have seven centimeters and 22 centimeters, and then we have the length multiplied by six. So I think it was around 100 centimeters. We can see that the same amount of fabric on a big one and a small one doesn't have exactly the same effect. So on the small one, it's nice and distributed, but on the big one, it just looks like a piece of fabric that someone left on the table and it's a scrap and it's not that nice. Even when you put it on your arm, it just, it's weird. It's very weird. But on the other hand, if you add more fabric onto a small one, this one has way too much. So there's not a lot of room for more fabric and it feels cluttered a little bit. But on the other hand, this same amount of fabric is just, you cannot even feel it. You can, you could add even more on the big, option. So you have to be very careful depending on what size you want your scrunchie to be. I didn't find the best ratio in the world. I found a little bit of something that worked for me. If you want your scrunchie to be seven centimeters wide, then I would say that you should multiply your length by 2.5. If you want your scrunchie to be around 12 centimeters wide, then I would multiply it by four. And if you want your scrunchie to be more than 22 centimeters, I would multiply it by six. Of course, you can add more or less, but this is mainly what worked for me. And one last thing that is going to affect your ratio is what fabric are you going to use? So here we have two different examples. I made two scrunchies with light fabric and two scrunchies with heavy fabric. The heavy fabric is denim and corduroy and the light fabric is kind of a satin and a viscose. I wanted to go a little bit on the extremes. So for this white fabric, you have the normal amount of gathers as the denim. And you can see that, yes, this denim is a little bit elastic, so it allows for quite a lot of fabric, but it already feels more cluttered than the white one, even though they have exactly the same amount of fabric. And on the other side, for the corduroy, I think I made this one like 70 centimeters by 12 centimeters. And you can see that it is cluttered. You could add a bit more maybe, but whenever it gathers, it creates this box of fabric and it's not as nice. But on the other hand, if you look at the satin fabric, this one, I made it like 200 centimeters long and still you could add a bit more and it gives a very nice effect and it's very nice on your hand. So have in mind which fabric you're going to use and work with that. And with all these things, you're going to have your perfect ratio. Now that you have all the information and you have decided on what is the size of your rectangle, let's get into sewing scrunchie. The first thing we have to do is measure our elastic. We're going to do that by putting it around our wrist and adding one centimeter for allowance. After that, we measure how much it is and we're ready to build our rectangle. Once we have the rectangle, we put right sides together and we sew along the seam. We give it a good press and we're ready to build a donut. We're going to do that by folding the inside twice and then we put right sides together. We secure it with pins and then we're ready to put it in the machine. What we have to do is basically sew along the seam, but then whenever we reach the end, we pull a bit of fabric and we continue sewing there until we leave a small gap. That gap, we're gonna use it to turn our scrunchie inside out. We give it a good press and we're ready to introduce the elastic. There are different methods to do that, but I use the safety pin and what I do is put it through. I attach a pin to the end of the elastic so I don't lose it. I thread the scrunchie all the way through and then I attach the elastic together with some zigzag stitches. Once that's done, I'm ready to close that hole and you can do it in several ways. I like to do it with hand stitches because I like it better like this, but you can also do it in the machine. And that's it, you have your scrunchie. And now for the bonus edition, I want to show you a couple more things that you can do with scrunchies. This version is very easy. You basically make a scrunchie and you make a bow and you attach them together and that's it. So I'll show you how to make the bow. To make this bow, we're gonna get a piece of paper and we're gonna fold it once lengthwise and once widthwise. With the fold facing yourself, you can uh, cut the same shape as I'm cutting at the moment. 
it will give you the shape of the bow and from that you have to cut two pieces of fabric. You put both pieces of fabric with right sides facing each other and you sew along the seam leaving a small gap. Once that's done you can cut the edges and add some snips around the curved edges. You can do that by cutting into the fabric or by using these scissors that I'm using here. After that, you can look for the hole that you had and you can turn the bow inside out. Don't forget to give it a good press and now we're ready to attach it to the scrunchie. We're going to do that by making a simple knot. You can afterwards, if you want to keep it there forever, you can add some stitches to put it in place. But otherwise you can just do the knot and that's enough. The second thing you can do is add ruffles so that your fabric is going to have all these little ruffles. Here is how it's done. To add the ruffles, just cut two pieces of ruffles the same length as your scrunchie and put right sides together, pin them together and sew along the edges. Give it a good press and follow the same instructions as the scrunchie. Another version that I saw and I thought I wouldn't like and it ended up being my favorite is this huge scrunchie. What you basically do is you create a scrunchie like the big one, like the 22 centimeters, and then you add the channel in the middle. So you create two stitchings, one centimeter apart or two centimeters apart, depending on the size of your elastic, and then you thread your elastic through there. And it has a very nice effect because it has ruffles on both sides, but it also gathers in the middle in the same way. So it's very pretty. And one last thing that you can do if you feel spicy and you want to spice it up with your scrunchies is add things like pearls. Here I added pearls all around my scrunchie. And I don't know, it's kind of a cute little addition. You can add bows and you can add pearls and you can add whatever you want in the end and what you have to do is just sew it into the scrunchie. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know which aesthetic of scrunchie is your favorite and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!